Cascade implementation of a digital filter is uh, shown in this example. As you can see, we have a given desired transfer function h of z in z domain. It has a third order polynomial in numerator. It has a third order polynomial in denominator. So no wonder we expect we break it down into say a first order polynomial and then a second order polynomial so that we can construct a third order polynomial. And that's why we expect as seen to be able to realize this uh, or implement this filter in the form of a cascade of or a series of first order stage and then a second order stage. The reason we say these are first and second order stages is because number of registers there. So the first order stage has one register while the second order stage has two registers there. And uh, there is a scale stage at the beginning that or gain stage that we need to also figure out its gain. So overall, there are six unknown coefficients in this implementation that we need to figure out. Okay, to get to that, focus on h of z and for, for a moment, focus on numerator. We can see that we can factor out 24z in numerator. So let me rewrite h of z as 24z times 7z to the power 2 plus 3 z plus 1. And for denominator, there is a third order polynomial with coefficients uh, 1, 8, 23, 24. Of course, manual work is always possible, but one easy way to uh, figure it out if we can break it down into a product of first and second order is just using a tool like MATLAB. So I just copy pasted those uh, 1, 8, 23, 24 coefficient with this specific order. And what I can do is I can just uh, run, find the roots, which means the roots of this polynomial. And you can see immediately that I have, and you can see immediately that I have a minus three there, which means, uh, uh, which means three Z plus one is an option. And then what I can do is I can just do a deconv. So I, I am basically factoring out that three uh, Z plus one and out of the overall third order polynomial to find the second order component. And if I do that, you see that I get 158, which means 8z2 plus 5z plus 1. So that's what I want. Okay, if that is the case, then what I can do is I can just go back to uh, my breakdown and rewrite h of z in the form of 3z plus 1 that I found, and then in the form of 8z square, and then plus 5z plus 1. Okay, that's exactly what we found in MATLAB. So 1, 5, 8 are the coefficients that we found. All right, so this is the breakdown, and it exactly got to the point we wanted, meaning that um, I can, let me just also ex further expand this so that it is clear. So I'm, I am going to rewrite h of z in the form of, so it's 24, let's factor out seven from, from this portion of numerator, let's factor from this second order, let's factor out seven. So if we do that, we end up with, um, so we end up with 24 times seven and uh, then we have z over, let's also factor out 3 here. So 24 times 7 divided by 3. And let's factor out 8 from this portion. So 8. So what remains is z plus 1 over 3. And then times a, poly, uh, a portion or segment that has only second order polynomials in numerator and denominator. It would be z squared plus 3 over 7 z plus 1 over 7. Numerator and then denominator is z squared plus 5 over 8 z plus 1 over 8. Okay, let's further just simplify obviously 3 times 8 and 24 cancel out. So what we get is 7 and I can rewrite instead of writing uh, z over z uh, plus 1 over 3, I can rewrite it in this format. So I am going to rewrite it in the format of 1 over 1 plus 1 over 3, z minus 1. Okay, so 
that's the first order uh, that's the first order stage and for second order stage i'm going to factor out z square from numerator and also at denominator so i can rewrite in the form of one plus three over seven c minus one plus one over seven z minus two divide by one plus five over eight 5 over 8 z minus 1 plus 1 over 8 z minus 2. Now, why do we? Why are we doing it this way? Because ultimately what we want to do is we want to represent transfer function in the form of polynomials in, in z minus 1. Because z minus 1 is what is corresponding to delay elemental register. So whenever you see z minus 1, it means one delay elemental register. Now, um, this is well known, but let me show you. We are almost done. Uh, the 7 uh, is the gain stage. reason for that is we managed to realize the, uh, the structure or the format of the components as we wanted. There is one. Okay, so there is one. There is one and one here. There is one and one here. That is exactly what we wanted to get to uh, these. If you look at the figure, so in the, in the second stage and first stage, we have effectively a one gain and one gain and one gain here. These are the ones we wanted. So um, with that in mind, and also another one, you, you, you're looking at this whole thing and you're saying you're showing me four ones. Where is the fourth one? This is the fourth one. So I'm going to show you why this is the case. So since those are ones, we managed to reformat the whole thing into this structure, and this 7 remains outside, so effectively that means the gain state shown should at the beginning of uh, the circuit should be 7. So that is 7. But why is this implemented this way? Well, take a look at, for example, what we have here. So let me use a different color so that it is clear. Uh, okay, so... Imagine uh, we are talking about this stage. What is it implementing? So I'm going to just uh, write it here. So input samples come uh, at this point. Let's say input samples that are, say, uh, I'm going to show as, um, I don't know, x in, or I'm going to show as uh, whatever name you want to say. x1 comes in to plus and uh, we have this gain stage. So let's name it as coefficient uh, C. And uh, then we have multiplied by one. Then we are going to a register, which means a delay element C minus one register is delay element C minus one. And then after that, the there is only a gain of one and we get to the output, which means enter exiting the first stage, entering the second stage. Okay, so what, how is this working? If this is x2, we can see that x, uh, what's happening is here, we have the delayed version of x2, which is x2, this is x2n, this is x2n minus 1, after, at the output of z minus 1, which, this is in time domain representation. In z domain, the way we represent that, it would be z minus 1, x of z, and then we are multiplying it by c. So what shows up here is c times z minus 1, x of z, and uh, what we are doing is we are adding it to, we are adding it to input, uh, if this is the realization. So we are adding it in this realization to input, uh, and then the summation will generate the value that become the output. So effectively, what we are saying is x to z equal to <coughs> x1 z plus um, c times z minus 1 x um, and in this case this is x2 so x2 z x2 z so x2 z in summary what I get from this whole discussion is this, this whole computation is x2 z is equal to um, is equal to 1 which is this one and then uh, over 1 minus, because you have to move this to the other side so that you can factor out x to z, become 1 minus c z minus 1 times x1 z. So this is the transfer function for 
uh, the first stage that is highlighted on top. But since, uh, so that's why I'm insisting that it's, it, it is important that we sh uh, should realize these two ones as we did, but then we have plus one over three z minus one instead of negative c z minus one. So that indicate that coefficient c should be equal to minus one over three. Comparing these two. So um, all I'm trying to say is the value of uh, the value of this coefficient on top, let me clean up. Okay, so on top, the value of this coefficient, this coefficient should be uh, minus 1 over 3. For the same reason, uh, we can realize, so we are done with the, with the gain stage, we are done with the gain stage, and... Uh, we are done with the and we are done with the first stage. So what remains is now the second stage. So the second order stage. Okay. So for the same reason, we can also we can, we can also do the same thing. So if you if you don't have the numerator, assume you don't have the numerator. So if you don't have the numerator, what it looks like would be something like this: one over one plus five over eight, z minus one plus 1 over 8 uh, z minus 2. Um, if that is the case, same argument for, for the same argument that uh, was, uh, for the same reason that was discussed for the first stage, it means that uh, this coefficient on top, let me use a different color so that it's clear what I'm showing you. So I'm going to use the, let's say, um, on, let's say blue color on top. So on top, I don't get the exact contrast I want. So this coefficient for the second stage, that should be equal to negative 5 over 8. And uh, the second one here should be equal to minus 1 over 8. So effectively, I'm using this and using this one and with the proper sign negation to get to that. Okay, and obviously, since it's not just the denominator, I also have a numerator component like this that defines the value of um, the coefficient for the remaining two coefficients. So I get from from three over seven plus from three over seven plus I get minus three over seven here, and from plus one over seven of z minus two I get minus one over seven here. And yes, the structure is implementable this way. Um, reason for that again, if you are interested, uh, imagine that. Uh, just just for the sake of completeness, imagine that you don't do this. Imagine this one here is coefficient d1, uh, coefficient, uh, or let's make it coefficient a1, coefficient a2, and coefficient uh, b1, and coefficient b2. Okay, so input x2 comes in, and output y goes out. So what is the transfer function? Okay, if you're interested in that, so the transfer function in that case would be <clears throat> this way. So you're saying we can we can reshuffle things around if you want, but uh, you can rewrite this whole thing in this format. You can effectively show that it is you have effectively two stages. So what you can show is you have input coming z minus one and uh, z minus one. So you can think of these, you can think of these on top as two separate stages. And I can change the order of these two stages just to make it easier to analyze by, swap, by swapping the placement of them. So I can swap the placement of them and repeat the registers basically. Uh, because system is linear and uh, you're talking about LTI system, the order doesn't matter. So we can do this implementation then. So x2 still comes in, x2 samples coming in, and then they get to this point. This is the entrance to uh, the next block, and this means gain of 1, by the way, here as before. So we, have, we are now implementing the first part, which looks like uh, something like this. So this is still y, and we have uh, z minus 1, 
and we have z minus 1 and then we have a2 and uh, we have a1 and these are added so that's the same as scheme I just swap the order of the two stages you saw and that doesn't change anything if this is implementation then uh, it, it's easy to see that what this is realizing effectively here in this adder you're adding x2 plus b1 delayed version of x2 plus b2 2 delayed version of x2 so at this point let me change the color so that it is clear at this point we have in this point in this node what we have is x2 in z domain let's say plus b1 z minus 1 x2 uh, plus b2 z minus 2 x2 z so that is what we have in z domain representation now you're entering a purely iar stage here so um, what do we have here as uh, was shown before what is implemented here is a1 delayed version of y is added to input that is coming in so uh, basically whatever input comes in is going to be multiplied by this transfer function 1 minus a1 z minus 1 minus a2 z minus 2 so uh, to get to the to get to the y output so no wonder it means um, i can factor out x2 here by the way so I can instead of keep writing this x2 I can factor it out and instead I can write 1 so it means x2 comes in via the first portion is multiplied by numerator and via the second portion is multiplied by, by something that has only denominator therefore we can form the whole thing that we wanted but there is but we need to be careful about the um, oh uh, we need to be careful about the negative and positive signs so that part I made a little mistake uh, I'm gonna make the correction here so b1 and b2 are equal to uh, 3 over 7 and uh, 1 over 7 so be careful about that I was about to make a mistake um, so b1 and b2 are exactly using the uh, sign that we have so 3 over 7 and 1 over 7 and the a1 and a2 but they get the negative sign because of what we just observed in denominator minus a1 and minus a2 so since we have plus 5 over 8 and plus 1 over 8 therefore a1 is negative 5 over 8 so a1 is negative 5 over 8 and uh, a2 is negative 1 over 8 Okay, just be careful then, uh, so that the, the kind of mistake that I was about to make is not going to happen. B1 is exactly uh, plus 3 over 7, and uh, B2 is exactly 1 over 7. Plus 3 over 7 and plus 1 over 7. So that's the value of B1 and B2 as shown on, uh, in the top plot, and A1 and A2 are also shown properly uh, here. Okay, I hope that this example is helpful in terms of showing how the cascade implementation of digital filter for a desired transfer function can be implemented.